guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in today's tutorial we're going to be doing something really interesting which is creating an API which is going to be based on an EPOS system. So this is going to be a really basic tutorial on showing you guys how to create a really really basic API using Flask and the API is going to be um, around the concept of a restaurant management system or an electric point of sale system which is EPOS. So to begin with, what I want you guys to do is open up command prompt so that we can install all the required modules um, such as Flask, which will allow us to basically host our API. So first off, open, open command prompt. And for me, I usually like to open it as administrator to basically avoid any errors and stuff that can happen. So open it as admin and then pip install Flask. Now it's going to do its thing. For me, it already says requirement satisfied because I've already installed um, Flask before actually starting this tutorial. So that's one of the things you're going to need along with the another module that's called Flask underscore RESTful. So this module basically lets us create a RESTful API, um, meaning that it's going to give us the ability to create, delete, um, update or uh, I'm forgetting another word or read data from the API. So that's basically what an API is in general. It lets you uh, request or post data to it based on different endpoints and you can also do other fancy stuff with it. So enough of me talking, let me actually install this. And as you see again, it's or it's saying requirement already satisfied because I've already got this installed before actually starting this tutorial. So once you've got both of this installed, we're actually good to go. So I'm going to close down uh, command prompt, go ahead into Visual Studio Code and then open up a new file, save that as, I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now, call that eposapi.py and then save that up. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that it's easier for you guys to see. And the first things we're going to do is actually import all the modules slash libraries that we're going to need to basically code this API. So first things first, import from Flask, we want to import uh, the Flask class and then the request. We, not, we might not actually end up using request, but we'll just import it anyway. The second thing you want to do is from Flask underscore RESTful, you want to import resource and API. Now, API, these two classes are basically going to let us um, well, look at the different data that's being um, passed in by the user, as well as just handle different actions of the API and initialize the API itself. So once that's done, we also want to import another thing from Flask RESTful, which is basically going to let us pass the data that's being given to us while uh, users do post requests. Now, I'm going to explain that a bit more in depth a bit later when we actually code the post requests. Now post request is nothing more than just the user wanting to uh, store some data into a database. So they basically send that data to an API, then the API will post that data, save it up in a relevant table somewhere in the database so that it's saved. Um, so we're gonna from flask request, we're gonna import um, request pass. Basically what it does is it passes all the requirements or uh, parameters that are passed by the user and then it will give it to us as a dictionary but I will explain that in the end. First things first we want to initialize uh, the Flask class and the API library so this is just part of the setup before we actually start coding the actual meat of the system which is going to be a few functions and classes but we have to first of all initialize flask and then the api needs to be attached to the flask web server as well so to start with we create a new variable called app and then assign that to the flask class that we just imported and then we will have to pass in name as a parameter as well now the next thing we want to do is actually attach this api so the API module needs to be wrapped around Flask because it was built on it. So what we need to do is create a new variable called API equals that to capital A because that's the class API. And then we need to assign that to app. So basically what that does is it wraps around the um, Flask web server or the Flask class. That's all the initialization stuff done. 
Now what we want to do next is, in, just for the sake of this tutorial and to keep it simple, I'm not actually going to implement this with a database but rather save all the data into a dictionary. So I'm going to create a dictionary that's going to be called, uh, just let's call it database for now. Well, actually let's call it RMS which will stand for restaurant management system and then that's just going to be a blank dictionary for now. Now in the dictionary what we could have saved is things to do with the restaurant because an ePOS system will of course have to re uh, remember things about the restaurant such as the restaurant name, the phone number, the address and so on and the main sort of thing that the ePOS system will have to remember or must remember is the different items on the menu, the pricing of the item on the menu and then the inventory such as the uh, item so how many the quantity of the item so let's start by creating a default key in here which is going to be called restaurant and then the value of that key is just going to be let's say another dictionary which is going to be name um, and we can call our restaurant KFC for now because it's quite a popular one then we can create another key for phone number and the value would just be a random string so 0789 something 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 and then we can create another key for address now obviously you can be as creative as you want but just for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to create three keys and um, values inside this restaurant key so I'm going to do something like uh, 122 uh, new clothes and London right so we'll just do that for now so we've got a restaurant uh, we've got the restaurant details saved up into the RMS dictionary nicely done now we're just going to put a comma in here and then I'm going to create a new key called menu now this key called menu is basically going to store all the details such as the different items on the menu and then the quantity of those different items as well so just as an example um, we're going to end up with this item whenever we start our server so as an example inside this menu dictionary I'm going to add a key which is going to be called let's say wings uh, and then we'll assign that to another dictionary so basically we've got menu which is the key that's inside RMS and then we've got wings which is part of menu so it's one it's, it's actually the first item in menu now since Wings is a key and the value of Wings is another dictionary, we could uh, add some more details in there, such as the price. So obviously each item will have to have a price. And let's say Wings are pretty expensive and they're £5.50 for now. And then another important one could be quantity or remaining, or you could just call it quantity. I'm just being very specific and calling it quantity remaining. And then I'll do something like 30 for now. So that basically will be the uh, structure of our RMS sort of dictionary that's acting as our database for now. In a, in a real life scenario, you would obviously save these details into an actual SQL database or a um, non-relational database such as MongoDB. But just for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna save it into a short dictionary. Now the API will obviously let us read the data from this um, RMS dictionary and give it to the user based on different endpoints, update the data in this dictionary and also delete and add more data to this dictionary. So we're mainly going to be focusing on this menu dictionary here. So once this dictionary is done, this is sort of our preset or template because we want to have something in it when we start the server otherwise it's going to get really confusing. So. Once we're done with that, what we need to do next is let's create a class which is basically going to be called uh, restaurant. So our class is going to be called restaurant and then inside the class what you want to do is as an argument pass in the resource class that we imported earlier. So up here we imported the resource class from Flask RESTful. We need to pass that class into um, our restaurant class right here. Now once we do that there are specific class names that are reserved in here um, that basically represent different requests. Uh, so basically I, I said class names but what I actually meant is methods because since we're in classes we can create different methods or functions so the specific names that have been re reserved for certain requests. So if I did def and then get which basically stands for a get request and then I can basically type in self and then something like return and I'm going to say welcome to RMS. 
So what I've done just now done here is I've created a class and then passed in resource as the parameter. And then inside class, basically what Flask will do or Flask underscore RESTful will do is it recognize, recognizes get as an inbuilt sort of method that will be a get request. So every time a get request is made um, and this class is run, basically what we're doing, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be returning a string called welcome to RMS. Now, obviously, this is not just magically going to work. So we have to sort of assign this to something before we actually get it to work. So what we need to do is we need to create sort of a map for all of this to be shown. So there's different endpoints on an API um, based on which data is shown. So we're going to be creating those endpoints right now. So we're going to be calling this mapping classes uh, to different endpoints, right? So let's call it that for now. And then earlier we created a variable called API, which was assigned to the API being initialized. So we're going to be using that to basically map. So we're going to do API.add resource, which is like adding a page or adding an endpoint, if whichever way you want to think about it. And then in this, what you need to do is provide the API um, with a class that it can basically run. So I'm going to say the class I want it to run is called restaurant and it's obviously up here so it's readable. And then I'm going to say the endpoint I want this to trigger on is going to be forward slash. So basically what that means is every time a, a user loads up just a default page of my Flask server they'll end up on this endpoint which is forward slash and then this restaurant class will be run. Now when the restaurant class is run the Flask library is going to go, oh, is there any requests in here that I can deal with? And it's going to see the get requests right here. And then it's going to say, okay, I've got a get request. So I'm just going to return to the user, welcome to RMS. Now that's the very um, theory sort of explanation of it, but it will make more sense once I start the server. Now there's only another step to actually starting the server, which is um, adding the main guard or the name guard. So we do if name, is equal to main and then we'll do app.run so app is obviously the initialization of the flask sort of web server and then we're going to do debug is equal to true now the reason we do debug is equal to true is because if there's any errors um, while running um, while running the server the server won't crash it's just going to show us what the error is and then it's just going to carry on its operation unless it's like a serious syntax error in your python code so w once you're done with this uh, sort of statements, this could just be called um, starting the server and API that sits on it. Well, it's technically just starting the server. The API is automatically assigned to it. But anyway, starting the server. And then once I run this, as you can see, we get some messages and then we get told what link to actually open as well. So this is the link that we want to sort of open up. So I'm going to copy that link. And what I'm going to do now is what, 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 a really good way to actually view this would be opening up a browser tab and then pasting it in there and pressing enter. Now, when you press enter, as you see, what it goes ahead and does is with all is it says welcome to RMS. Now, the reason it does that is because whenever we type in enter here, we're making a get request to forward slash. So obviously we've mapped forward slash and the get request to forward slash with returning welcome to RMS. Now we don't want this to sort of be a thing. So we're going to get rid of that and actually start making our API a bit more practical. So I'm going to stop our server right now. And what I'm going to do is instead of doing return welcome to server, I'm going to return the, um, basically I'm going to return the full dictionary that we have. So I'm going to do something like return. Oh, I'll get rid of this. I'm going to do return. And then I'm going to say RMS because that's the name. And then I'm going to say restaurant. Now what that's going to do is it's going to return RMS, which is the dictionary and restaurant, which is the key. So it's basically going to return the restaurant details. So it's going to say name, KFC, phone number, blah, 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 and address, blah, blah, blah. So that's what it's going to do. Makes a bit more sense to have it in the API because the user can basically make a request and it will show up. Now, obviously we can change the endpoint to instead of being forward slash, we can do something like forward slash and then restaurant. That makes more sense. So when the user goes to the address that the server is running on and does forward slash restaurant, 
it's basically going to run this restaurant class and then there's a get request in restaurant class right here which says return the restaurant details so let's run that again to see if it actually works open up chrome back into it and then i'm going to do localhost 5000 which is the equivalence of doing 127.0.0.1 and then i'm going to say restaurant and as you see it works pretty well so now if i refresh this it's going to say not found because we obviously got rid of the forward slash root and we got the restaurant root in there so if i did restaurant again we get all the restaurant details so as you see name kfc phone number blah 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 address blah 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 so that's a basic get request and an endpoint done so that's how you would create an endpoint and basically get a request uh basically send a response back to a re request as well now i'm going to close this off and at this stage what i'm going to recommend you guys do is download something called postman so i'm going to type it in and i think it's the first yep yeah, it's the first result that actually comes up so if you guys could actually download this it would be pretty useful because that's what we're going to be using to further test our api along the line now it's nothing too complicated uh this is what it looks like so if i open it up this is what it looks like and it basically lets you make different requests to your api and lets you test it so if i create a new request in here so you click on new click on request and then uh or you don't even have to do that you can just click on this add sort of tab button here and then it will be called untitled request or whatever it is and you type in the address where you want to make this request to so one to seven point 0 0.0.1 5000 forward slash restaurant now the very important bit is you need to specify what type of request this is going to be so it's already set to get so hopefully that should be fine now when i click on send you'll notice down here that i get the response with name kfc phone number blah 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 and so and so so uh basically our request is gone through fine and we've got a valid response as well cool now enough of the really basic stuff what we want to do next is let's just close the server down and what i'm going to do next is add a menu class um, which is going to help us get different items on the menu because right now what we can do is we can only get the restaurant details but what i want the api to be able to do is allow us to basically get all the menu items either individually or as as a complete list as well so let's start with being able to get individual details about individual items on the menu so let's create a new class called menu and i'm going to zoom out of the screen a bit because it's becoming a bit hard to code i'm going to create a new class called menu so class menu and we always need to pass resource through um, because it's it's sort of like a dependency it's the way it works and then what we want to do is we're going to be creating a get request and then we're going to call this self now when we do a get request and we want a specific item we want details about a specific item what we're going to be needing is to allow the user to actually add a parameter for a specific item so we've got wings as our menu right so if we did something like this menu if we created an endpoint called menu what we want to be able to do is do forward slash menu forward slash wings uh press send and then be able to get price details and quantity details about wings so that's what we want to be able to do now obviously we don't know what the user is going to type at this endpoint so we're going to need to be um, able to make this flexible so that it can be sort of like a variable so what we want to want to do is go in here um, into the api.add resource section and then we're going to add resource and what we're going to add is the menu class and the endpoint is going to be forward slash and menu because that's the first endpoint we want the user to go to then forward slash again and in small greater than and smaller than size um, i'm going to create sort of this is sort of going to be a placeholder for whatever's typed in here so it's sort of like a variable so whatever you type in the link is going to get replaced in here now instead of just doing now when we're coding the uh, menu class we've got self over here but we can also get the item so basically whatever the user enters over here is going to be passed in here so when i do this 
and print item for example and let me run the server quick it's running uh, let's just make that bigger make this a bit smaller and I'm gonna say I'm gonna go to 5000 under menu and then wings so when I send a get request to this endpoint what we get is obviously it says null over here but what you see over here is it says wings so it will actually it actually knows what item is being typed in by the user now if I change this up to let's say burger we should be able to get a response well get get a print that says burger now we basically know the item that the user is adding on so it shouldn't be too hard to progress onward so what we want to do after this is um, we want to check if the if the item that the user has typed in is actually a valid item on the menu or not so we're going to do a try and accept because if the item is not valid then we'll get a key error since we're checking it against the dictionary so we're going to try returning rms because that's the main dictionary and then under menu we're going to try returning the item that the user has typed in because if this item is a valid key such as wings then it should show up the properties of it if it's not then we should have a key error so i'm going to do something like accept key error and then we're just going to return an empty dictionary saying that we don't have any data about the item that the user has just typed in let's go ahead and run this to see if it actually works uh okay and now if i go menu burger now bear in mind we don't actually have burger in our dictionary if i just show that to you guys let's go up here we only have wings and that's it with a capital w so when i send this i should get just an empty dictionary back which i do so basically the api is going oh is this a is burger a valid key in the menu dictionary and it's saying nope we get a key error so it's going to return an empty dictionary but on the contrary if i typed in a valid menu item such as wings it should return the price which is 5.5 and then the quantity remaining which is 30 amazing so we've got the we've got basically different endpoints and get requests working and we've added a little bit of validation as well so now that we've done all of that what we could also do is be able to create a put request so a put request is very simple it basically just means update so what if we wanted to update something from the menu so let's say we wanted to change the um, price for wings or we wanted to change the quantity remaining for wings we could easily do that as well by creating a put request so let's go in our menu class and then create another method for a put request so you may have already guessed since get is called get put is also called put so we just type in put as a method and then flask will recognize that once again self as a parameter and then we're going to also need the item so that we can actually update the dictionary according to the item name so first things first what we want to do is we want to check if the item that's being typed in that the user wants to update is actually a valid item in our dictionary so we can literally copy and paste the lines from before and paste it down here so basically what we're doing is we're checking um, instead of returning anything though we're just going to do try and then rms menu item so if it is a valid um, item then the program will just continue if it's not then we're going to get a key error and we can return something like an error and then we're going to say item whatever item they've typed in does not exist on the menu so we've added a bit of validation there so we're checking whether the item that the user wants to update is actually part of the dictionary uh, if it's not then we just return sort of like an error and the function or method just stops there now we actually need to be able to allow the user to add some arguments onto their post request so that we can update um we can update our dictionary with those arguments so to deal with that we need the request parser so that's what i was talking about earlier on so we need to first off initialize a parser so we're going to call this parser and that's going to be equal to req pass or request pass dot request parser so it's the library we imported earlier on so it's going to basically let us um, grab data that the user wants to send to us and we can use that data to basically update our dictionary once you've initialized your parser and assigned it to a variable 
the rest is pretty simple. We need to think, we need to basically think about the different um, f the different sorts of data that we want from the user. So one of them is obviously going to be the item. Um, no, actually, one of them is actually going to be the price because we al already have details about the item uh, from up here. So we don't really need to put it as an argument. So it's going to, one of them is going to be the price and one of them is going to be the quantity remaining. So that's the two arguments the user can make. So I'm going to say parser.add argument and then price. So basically what we're saying is we want the user to be able to add a price as an argument. And then we're also going to say parser.add argument and then I'm going to add a quantity remaining argument as well. Now you could have called this anything, but just for consistency purposes and for everything to make sense, I'm adding it as what it actually means. Now we've basically allowed the user to send us data about price and quantity remaining by doing this. Now, once we're done with adding these arguments to the parser, we actually need to create a new variable called result and then call parser and then do dot parse arguments so what this will do is it will go ahead into the put request and check what data has been sent to us and it's only going to filter out the d user data the data from the user for price and the user data for quantity remaining the rest of the data that's posted to us will just or put to us will just get ignored now the result uh, variable is just going to be turned into a dictionary with basically the data that was sent to us by the user. So if I do print result at this stage, and then if we just run our server, uh, we have a key, we have an indentation error. So we go up here on line 27, back one, and try again. And our server is running, which is good. Let's go back to Postman. And now what we need to do is I'm going to go on to menu and then wings which is actually an item and then i'm going to do a put request now if i send this off what you'll see here is when i move this a bit to the left you see that price is set to none so we as i said result is going to turn into a dictionary and it's basically going to look for these details whether the user actually sends them or not now since the user didn't send any price details or any uh, quantity de remaining details in the put request it's saying none now we've also added validation to make sure that it gives an error when we try to update or make a put request to something that doesn't exist so if i did burger and send the error that we created earlier shows up it says error burger does not exist on the menu so that would be the section of code where we have a try and catch for the um, checking whether the item is actually a key from the menu so that's good as well now to be able to send data you basically need to be on the right endpoint such as wings because it's a valid item and then put a question mark in there and then type in your first parameter the first argument that we allowed the user to type or added to the request parser was price so the user can type in price and then equals that to something like 20 for example and then any other any other basically any other requirement any other arguments or any other uh par parameters that the user wants to uh, add in or any other data that the user wants to send to our api needs to be followed by an and so the other um, argument we added to the request parser was quantity remaining so we need to make sure we're typing that correctly and then we'll equals that to something like 200 now what happens there is the price will be s updated for wings to 20 and the quantity remaining will be updated to 200 but we haven't actually done the updating bit yet but when i do send what you will notice is it no longer says price none quantity remaining none it will actually take whatever values i put in my put request which is here so i said price was 20 and as you see it got that data it says price is 20 and then i said quantity remaining is 200 and as you can see it got that data now what if i misspelled this so if i said quantity something something and then send again it's actually going to say none because in our request parser we've created an argument for quantity remaining so we need to be very specific when we're um, right here so we need to be very specific when we are adding this data on so since we're able to grab the data that the user wants us to update the only thing left to do now is to actually update it in our dictionary 
So result is what the user senses. So data that the user has sent to us. And then what we want to do next is update the um, menu dictionary with data the user has sent. Okay, cool. So now when we want to update the user dictionary, first off, we need to make sure that the user has actually sent some data through because we don't want to save nonce into the um, into the dictionary because if the user doesn't send any data as we saw before result gets set to none so we're going to say if the result price is equal to none and the result quantity remaining remaining is equal to none as well then what we want to do is just return an error to the user that's going to say something like update either needs price or quantity or both because obviously without them providing these details we can't really update it and there's no point of them doing a put request if they're not going to give us the price and the quantity remaining that we want to that they want us to update so that's that will handle that and then as else we can basically do the rest of the checks so we can do an else statement up here and then we're going to update the dictionary so we're going to say updating dictionary uh, dictionary and then we can do an if here so we can say if the result and pri uh, and price so basically the price that the use data for price that the user senses if the data for price is not equal to none which means it's valid data then we want to go into the RMS dictionary then onto the menu uh, key which will result to giving us access to the uh, the, the sort of child dictionary then we want to type in item because the item would actually be a valid item since we've already checked that up here so we want to go on to the specific item on the menu and then we're going to do the price and then we'll equal that to result price so we're basically updating uh, from our RMS dictionary the price for the item the user is on to the price the user wants to update it to now we do the exact same thing with the quantity remaining as well so we're basically pretty much repeating ourselves over here where we're checking to make sure that it's not none and if it's not none then we update it so we say we go into menu we go into the item the user is on but this time, instead of the price, we're going to update the quantity remaining. Uh, and then we'll set that to result and quantity remaining. Hopefully I haven't spelt that wrong anywhere. So that will basically update everything. And then we can go one end and back and return a message that says that we have successfully updated the, um, the item. So we can say something like item plus updated so that will basically tell the user that we've updated whatever they wanted to update with whatever data that basically sent to us so now that we've got the put working which was quite long but we've made sure that it's pretty robust so we've added quite a bit of validation we could have done without the validation but there there would basically expose our api to the user so that they can somehow break it, but we don't want that. So now when I run my server, if I go onto my put request and I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to change this to a get request and then send. And as you see, initially I haven't done a put request yet, but the price for my wings is 5.5 and the quantity remaining is 30. Now, if I essentially, when I do the put request to wings and then I send new data. So if I said price is equal to 1000, which is crazy expensive for wings but oh well and then quantity remaining is equal to one so let's say we just had one pack left um, when i do this put request what we want it to do is basically update the dictionary on our flask server so the next time i make a request to menu wings so when i make a get request to menu wings i should see this stuff being updated so when i send this off voila it says menu message wings updated and then if I go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff, because I'm about to change this to a get request, 
and send it off uh we actually don't see any updates for some reason but we will figure it out we don't see any updates on the price but we do see an update on the quantity remaining so let's take a look at the thing again so we've got price is equal to 1000 and quantity remaining is equal to one uh let's take a look at our code so i'm pretty sure i might have spelled something wrong with the price so if i said if result price is not equal to none then we will go into menu the item and then update the price with the um the price that the user has sent to us so that should be correct um i'm not sure why it is not okay let's try that again so i'm going to make another request so another put request and send it off it says wings updated so hopefully it will actually show up let's do a get request there and it still shows 5.5 that is um, that is a bit weird, but we can figure it out because we still let me try another put request where we do quantity to one one something um, and then we'll do another put request send. Uh, we'll go back to wings, do a get request, and obviously it does update, but the price for some reason isn't updating. I feel like we've uh, it's going to be a really simple mistake that I have made. If I save this up, uh, we've got RMS menu item price is equal to result price. Then let me just check up here. I've got price. Then I have if result is none. And okay, is equal to none. We give an error. Else we do this. Hmm don't seem to see anything wrong but let's just try it again so we'll go do a get request and it should be 5.5 and 30 which it is we do a put request and then i'll send all the data that's required so we've got price is equal to 1000 and quantity remaining is 10,000. let's send it off do a get request get rid of this data here send again and voila turns out it was just a need to refresh my server which is a bit crazy because i would have been spending ages just to look for it but either way the put request is now successful because we've been able to update the price and quantity remaining for wings now if you had additional items you'd be able to do that for them as well which is pretty cool now we still need to go through two more methods which is a one one of which is a post request and the other is a delete request once we're done with that, we have basically created a, um, a RESTful API that allows us to create, read, update, and delete, um, which is pretty cool. So once now that we're done with the put request and it's working fine, we're going to go ahead and explore how we can basically delete, um, we, how we can delete uh, a menu item using the API as well. So what we want to do is inside the menu class again, we're going to scroll down past, put, past the put, put request that we made. And I'm just going to check that I'm on the right indent. I am. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a class for delete. So def delete. And then we're going to pass in the self and item as well, because we want to know what item from the menu, of course, the user is trying to delete. So now we, like always, we check if the item is actually valid. So if it's actually in the dictionary. So checking, check if the item is valid. Do a try and then RMS menu uh, item. Now, obviously, if it's, uh, if it doesn't exist, then we shouldn't get a key error. So accept key error, return error, and then we can do item plus does not exist so that will sort that out so we're basically validating to make sure that the item is actually valid and then what we want to do next is if obviously the item is valid then deleting item from the menu so we just use the delete command or del and then we do rms menu and then item simple as that so basically saying 
go to the RMS dictionary, go into the menu key, and then in the menu key, if you see another key called item, just delete it off. So obviously item is going to be replaced with whatever endpoint the user is on. And then we probably want to return a message to the user saying that the item has been deleted. So return message item plus uh, space deleted. So that should look after the item um, item being deleted. And that's how you would create a very simple and basic delete request as well. So let me run this up just to make sure that it's actually working. So server's running fine, which is great news. I'm going to do a get request to menu wings and then send it off. And as you see, price is 5.5 again, because obviously we restarted the server. So everything defaults back again. But obviously, if I did a put request and updated the price and quantity remaining, that would work as well. So if, let me just do a put request uh, and then put the price to something weird like 100. And then the quantity will just do it, uh, let's say 20. I send that off and go back into wings, do a get request, send, and obviously it's been updated. Now let's let's say we wanted to delete delete wings. The only thing that would need to change is the type of request. So we'd have to change the get request to a delete request because that's how we've coded it. And then we're basically saying we want to go onto the menu and then we want to go onto wings. So we want to delete wings. We want to make a delete request to the wings endpoint. So it basically deletes wings from our RMS dictionary. Send it off and let's hope it works. And it says wings deleted. Now, if I change delete to a get request to try and get wings, let's send it off. And we get return nothing because wings does not exist anymore since we just deleted it. And hence, we basically get the empty dictionary um, since we coded it before. Now, if I try to delete something that doesn't already exist, we should probably get an error. So I try to delete that. It says Wings does not exist, which is perfect. We've coded validation for this as well. Amazing. So now the only bit that's left is to be able to create a post request where we're able to add new items onto the menu. As of now, we only have Wings, which we manually added to the dictionary, but we want to be able to make a post request and then add those items to the menu. So let's close this off. And what we actually want to do for this is we want to create a new class. And I'm probably going to call the class, uh, let's call it main for now. So uh, let's go above here. And then obviously we have a menu class down there. But I'm going to create a new class. And then I'm going to call this main. Pass resource brew again because that's important. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a get, sorry, a post request. And then in the post, I'm just going to pass self. Now, one thing you may notice is for a post request, you don't really need to be on an endpoint. You, we, do, we don't need to know where we're adding this. We, do, we just need to be on the menu endpoint. And then we can make a post request uh, passing the details for the item name the price and the quantity remaining. So that's why we don't have um, item as an extra parameter here. Now that we have a simple post method in here, I'm going to add this to the API resources. So let's scroll down a bit. And then I'm going to do API dot add resource. And then I'm going to say main because that's the function I want it to run. And in main, what we want to do is we're going to assign it to the roots forward slash menu. So basically what that's going to do is going to say anything, any post request or any requests that come under forward slash menu are going to be forwarded to the menu class. So let's go up here and we've got a post request. So let's start coding our post request. So what we need to do first is create a parser because obviously we need to get the data that the user is sending. So like before, we have to create a parser. So I'm going to copy and paste the lines from before because it's going to be very similar. Copy the parser and the bit where you add the arguments and also copy the uh, bit where you pass the user data. So I'm going to paste all of that in there. So we're basically creating a new parser to deal with all the data the user is going to be sending us. Now we need an extra argument, which is going to be the item. Since the user is adding a new item to the menu, obviously we want to know what the item is going to be. So item is going to be a new argument that the user can specify in their post request. 
and then once the result runs um, the we're basically result is going to turn into a dictionary that's going to have item price and quantity remaining so we can simply add that to the RMS um, dictionary now we need to run a few checks so we need to make sure that none of these um, none of these items so item price and quantity remaining we need to make sure that none of them uh, end up being none because we want values in all of them otherwise it's going to be a bit weird so we're going to run a validation we're going to say if result item basically the data the user sends us if the item from the data is equal to none or the price from the data is equal to none or the quantity remaining remaining from the data is equal to none then we're just going to return an error and the message to the error is going to be missing fields right because we basically need all three fields in order to add an item to the menu makes sense because we can't add an item without the price and we probably shouldn't add an item without the quantity remaining because that will ruin the integrity so if this is not the case and if all three items obviously have the data that they need then we can go ahead and add this onto the dictionary pretty simply so we're just going to do um, adding item onto RMS dictionary and then we can do something like RMS then onto the menu uh, key and then the next key is going to turn into the name of the item so we're going to go into result and then item because that's the name of the item and then we're going to assign that to a new dictionary which for which the price is going to be the price that the user sent to us so price and the quantity remaining is going to be set to the quantity remaining that the user just sent to us so basically all we're doing is we're going into the menu dictionary adding a new key which is the key name is going to be the item name that the user just sent to us using the post request then we're assigning that to another dictionary just like we did with the wings where the price is going to be the price the user sent to us and the quantity remaining uh, I need quotes around that by the way just add quotes and then the quantity remaining is going to be set to the quantity remaining the user just posted to us as well oh why did I do that okay going back to it again uh, where is it now there it is going back to it again this should basically do the job for us now the only thing that's left is we can do a return statement here which is going to return a message and the message is going to be let's just say an f string because we want to be fancy uh, the message is going to say result item so basically the item name that the user sent to us added to the menu successfully and voila that should do the job now that's the post request you might say it's very similar to a put request and it is because all you're doing is you're grabbing data from the user and then in in the case of the put request that data already exists somewhere you're just trying to update it with the data users giving to you but in the case of a post request you're adding it to something so it's fresh data so I'm gonna run this again hopefully there's no errors nice um, and we're going to go in here and I'm going to do a get request to menu obviously nothing shows up but if I did a get request to wings something should show up and we get price 5.5 quantity 30 so um, let's do a post request to menu and let's send it off and it says that you've entered We've got a, basically a 404, but let's try doing a post request again. And obviously I was getting a 404 because I had an extra forward slash in the end. These type of things can cause errors. So we did add validation to make sure that the user obviously needs to add the item name, the quantity remaining and price. If they don't provide that data, then we just return an error, which is doing perfect. So let's actually provide the data. Let's provide item name to be, let's say wings. No, no, not wings, because we already got wings, so we'll do burger. Let's send it off, and it should still give us this error, because we're still missing the price and the quantity. So let's do price as well this time. Price is equal to, uh, just to troll. 
10 pence. And then let's send it off. Still missing fields because we are missing the quantity remaining. I do and quantity remaining is equal to uh, 100. And now if we send it off, we have an error because it says item is not defined. Okay. Uh, let's go back in here and it says item is not defined result item okay that's because item uh actually let's go back in here result item oh it's because item is obviously needs to be in quotes since it is a um, key and not a variable so let's run that again that was very silly of me we can basically just run the same query again so run that again and it says burger added successfully to the menu now the only way to verify this would be to do a get request under the menu and we can if we did winks here obviously we get the price for winks and quantity remaining for winks but if we did burger here um as you can see the post request did actually work because now we're able to grab the price which was 0.10 that's what we set it to and the quantity remaining we did set it to 100 so it's working flawlessly now, another last thing that I would like to do with this API is to be able to return all the items on the menu if the user does a get request to just menu. Because it will be so much easier for the user to just be able to get sort of a, a dictionary with all the items on the menu and all their details rather than having to go forward slash burger. Because the, bear in mind, a user that didn't use your API might not know what these items are. So it will be a good functionality to add. So let's do exactly that. Let's close this off, go into the main again, and we're going to do a get request. So we're going to say def get and then self. Now, bear in mind, this time we're not asking for an item because we're not going to request or return data about a specific item. We're just going to return everything um, that is in the menu uh, dictionary. So we're gonna return uh, RMS and then we're just going to return menu. So that will basically just return the um, entire RMS menu that we have. If it's empty, it's just going to return an empty dictionary. So that's pretty much the final ending touch that I wanted to add to this. Let's see if it works. Let's go ahead and try that off. Uh, now, if I go to menu, um, let's just make sure it's not in full screen, send that off. As you see, I get wings, price 5.5, quantity remaining. Now I no longer have to go into wings because, oh wait, why did that? Uh, oh, of course, because I have to go into menu first, then wings. So I no longer have to go into menu and then wings. I can just go into menu and be able to see basically all the items inside menu. Now you might say it looks the same, but obviously that's because we only have one item. I can prove that to you by making a quick post request. So let's make a post request to add an item. And then we'll say the item is equal to burger again. And price is equal to 10 pounds. Uh, and quantity remaining is going to be equal to 100. Let's make that post request. Burger has been added successfully. Now I can prove my point by going back to the menu endpoint and then just doing a get request and I should be able to see wings and menu. So as you see in the correct order as well, it says wings first um, and then burger. Now obviously we could change the order and stuff if we had a more, um, more usable, more viable, more generic database, which we could just make a query to, to sort by, but I'm pretty sure we could sort by keys as well if we added timestamps in here, but that would just make things complicated. Either way, guys, that was just a short tutorial on how you would create a simple basic API using Flask, um, being able to use all the uh, methodologies from CRUD, such as create, read, update and deletes. So that's all the points we covered while also being able to wrap this logic around a sort of real life EPOS system. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and were able to learn something new from it. Um, I would like to apologize for not posting for so long, but I would try and push out at least one video per month now that I'm back. If you guys have any ideas, as always, make uh, feel free to join my Discord chat um, and post your ideas there, or you can leave them in the comments as well. If you would like to subscribe, go ahead and do so. If you would like to like or any of the following, go ahead and do so. I would really appreciate it as it really helps. 
And guys, thank you so much for sticking around. Um, I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace. Thank you.